Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to what is going to be the chess tutorial, the multiplayer chess tutorial in which uh, we are going to make a multiplayer chess tutorial without using the unit, without using any third party uh, multiplayer unity, we're going to be using raw C sharp socket. And that is really cool because you get to learn how it's actually made, how it actually works without having some kind of third party with super high level um, calls and then you just don't really know what's going on. So in this first episode we're gonna just lay down the board, just generate the pieces on top of it as you can see right here and uh, we grab those model off my website, they're free, everything is pretty much free here so um, we just go there, we grab this, we do our little um, script here that does the generation of the board and that is what we're gonna do today guys and without further ado let's get right into it. Alright so let's talk a little bit about the spec of the project. We're not going to be using UNET for UNI, we're not going to be using Photon or any third party multiplayer. We're going to be using uh, raw C sharp sockets, uh, raw C sharp TCP sockets actually. And the reason I want to do this is just to have a good understanding at what is really at the base of this. And also, um, since we're not using UNET and we're not using like any third party for UNI, then the server we're going to be making is actually portable on something else. So you could be making it in Visual Studio and running it on a Linux, who knows. So you have a lot of options here and uh, I think it's actually a really good thing to do, a really good exercise to just practice with those TCP sockets instead of just using something else that is higher level. Then you get to understand really how it works um, in the back end and that's really useful for later on if you wish to just scale up your project or make, you know, an actual bigger multiplayer game. Alright, so um, without further ado, let's get right into making the game. Now, um, I've made some little assets here. I, I made some little um, art that you can download off the website. That's free, so it's usually it's supposed to be the first one here. Check your asset. You download that by clicking on download. And I'm going to be using these thing here that I've made um, instead of my Unity project. So, so I've got them in my clipboard. I'm simply going to paste this and extract. Inside of the little um, art pack, there is a few things. There is, I think, four models, one material, and also one texture. Let's quickly have a look at those. It is some basic stuff, so say a white piece, a border, a board, and also a black piece. They're all using the same exact material. We have to assign the, um, the texture first. Then you just drag and drop that on every single little piece. And that is going to be the first thing we'll do, guys. So we'll just get our models out there, just get our things ready to work with. And um, what I'm going to do now is just let's let's actually start by making the game itself without really thinking about the multiplayer part too much. We're just going to be making the game, and uh, I mean, we'll just make sure that it works basically. Okay. So the first step I always take when I create a new project is just to get everything sorted out here. So I have all of these, which is kind of a mess right now. I'll store everything in a folder called artwork. Just put everything in there and then what I'll do is I'll just create another folder. This is going to be for the prefabs. This one is for the scene and another one for script. Now I'm going to take the white piece, drag and drop it inside of the prefab folder. Same thing for the black piece and now we can remove them of the board. We now have a reference to those and here they are. Right. So as soon as we have that, um, we should actually start tackling, like I said, the usual just game mechanic without really thinking about the multiplayer part of it too much. Alright, so at this point we need some kind of controller for the scene. We need some kind of um, script that is going to contain a lot of logic on it, such as, okay, we just end the turn, okay, we're just starting a new turn, we should instantiate pieces, we should move pieces, and what I'll do is I'll actually put it on the board. The board is going to be like the game manager of this scene, we could say. So on the board, I'll create a new checkers board script, which we are going to open and uh, quickly define few fields that we might need. So what we're going to need in here is um, an array of pieces, actually a two-dimensional array of pieces. And the array should be, if we just count the tile, that is going to be 8 by 8. Now we don't really have a definition for pieces, so we should actually create that really quickly. Right here, I'll create a new C-sharp script and just call this piece. Now, back in my checkerboard, I can actually declare my public piece array that I'll just call pieces. And it's going to be a new piece array of 8x8, just like that. 
Now right now I'm getting an error here because peace could not be found, but that's kind of fake because we just we just created here. So let me just double click on that again. Let's reopen it. And it should actually work fine as you can tell. Okay, so now we got our pieces array. We need to actually start instantiating some of those. And uh we need actually for a 12, we need 12 piece per player because we have four per row and they have three rows. The first thing I'll need to do that is an actual reference to which one we're spawning. So white piece prefab and also a public game object for the black piece prefab. Okay, now it's time to actually define um, how exactly we're going to generate those. So I'll do a private void generate board, which is going to pretty much just create all the pieces one by one. And what I'll do is I'll actually iterate um, through the piece array, but just only the first three rows for the white team and then the last three rows for the actual black team. So let me just comment that out. Generate white team. Okay, so at this point we can iterate through our array just fine and that's, that's totally cool, but we can't really put a piece every single uh, tile we have. We have to put it two apart because you have one piece and then you have one empty and then another piece. So what we do here is a little bit different. We're going to start by iterating on the uh, Y component. Well, it's not really Y, but we're just going to call it Y because it's going to be um, the one that goes up and down the board instead of going left to right. So for int Y is equal to 0, as long as Y is smaller than 3, then we're going to generate the Y theme. So Y plus plus here. And now we can iterate through X. So as long as X is smaller than 8, what we'll do here is not uh, is not actually x plus plus. We're going to do x plus equal two. So this is where we're going to actually skip one. Now inside of this for loop, we'll go ahead and we'll just generate our piece, and we'll actually create another method for that. So a private void generate piece, and the parameter we'll send is int x and also int y. So we can simply say up here generate piece and we'll send X and Y. Okay, so let's quickly have a look at this in the generate piece. We, we're gonna go ahead and just actually just create that piece doing a um, instantiate. So I'm going to declare a game object call it geo is equal to instantiate and we're gonna actually instantiate. Um, let's just start by a white piece prefab then we'll have a look at how we can do it for the other team as well. So we create that piece. Now what we're going to say is geo that transform set its parent to the board itself. And the reason I do this is so my scene is not actually all messed up. And uh, if I just want to have a look at the pieces, they're going to be children of the board. Now right after that, we'll do pieces p is equal to geo that get components. So that means we're going to have to put the component piece on top of the actual piece. We get the component and then um, well, we don't really have anything to set in there yet because piece is kind of empty right now. As you can tell, that there's really nothing in here. So what we'll do instead is we'll simply place it inside of our pieces array. So pieces at the index x and y is equal to p. We'll simply start by just looking at this. Hopefully everything works. Uh, I'm going to drag and drop my prefabs in here. So that's my white piece prefab and that's my black piece prefab. Let's actually press on play, see what we get. So we get really nothing at this point because, well, it's <laughs> never really being called. Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and just do a private void start. And in the start, we'll call generate board. Okay, now it should, actually, <laughs> should work a little bit better now. So as you can tell, we've created 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 12, we created a total of 12 and that's exactly what we need. So we need 12 of those. Um, however, they are definitely not placed correctly and we need to fix that. So again, I'm going to create another method. This one is going to be for moving the piece. So private void move piece, which we'll use pretty much um, at other places as well. So let's, uh, let's actually do piece P and should we get this as a vector two? Or should we get this as a int x and int y? Let's do int x and int y again. Uh, we might use vector2 a little bit later on, depending on um, how exactly the flow of the code goes, but we'll see. So, 
move piece, which piece are moving? This one, and then add the position X and Y. Now, how exactly should we go about doing this here? Since we have a little offset in the board, uh, the board is actually in the center of the world, which means we have minus four on one side and we have four on the other side. So we'll have some kind of offset here. So let's do piece of transform the position. That's the first thing, of course. And then is equal. We're just going to calculate. Uh, we're just going to calculate it like if there was no actual offset. So vector three right times um, times x. So that's where it should be in x plus vector three forward times y. And that should be where it is supposed to be in y. And then this is where we're going to actually add an offset. So what kind of offset do we have? I still don't know. So I'll just leave it like that. Um, I'll declare a public vector 3. Oops, missing a semicolon here. Public vector 3 and I'll call this board offset. And for now let's just put it on uh, a new vector 3. Minus 4, 0 and then minus 4 again. And we'll do plus board offset. All right, sounds like a great plan actually. Let's uh, let's actually check it out. Press on play. And what do we have here? We have an error that says object reference is not set. So which one is not set actually? Everything here should be set. The only thing that is not is uh, p, because p is the one you get in parameters. So why exactly is that not set? I think I know why. It's because we never actually put the piece on top of our prefab. So when it actually creates those prefab, it then tries to fetch the piece component, but there is no piece component. So let's go on the white piece, drag and drop this, same thing for the black piece. And here we go, we now have the piece component on those. And okay, we definitely get some kind of weird result, but um, I mean, we're getting there slowly. So the pieces are going in the right exact place. I mean, this is where they should be, but you should have another offset just bringing him towards the center here like this and that would that is simply going to be a um, 0 0.5 in X and 0 0.5 in Y and the next thing that we'll need to fix is that those can't actually be placed right here they have to be placed on the green tiles so we'd have to check if the raw if the row here is odd or if it's even if it's odd then we just move it again on um, on the X axis so let's go ahead and try this out. We said that we did some uh, some other kind of offset. So this one is going to be a public vector three. I'll call this piece offset, and uh, this is going to be a new vector three minus zero. Should it be minus or let's actually do it positive zero point five f here? And I feel like just putting those private, so I don't actually see them in my inspector anymore. Right. Let's give this a try. And um, didn't add this to the equation down here, so let me go back. This is now a peeps. Uh, this is actually plus piece offset as well. And they are right where they should be, except of course the odd row that we mentioned. So this should be actually shift toward this side, and then we'll have an actual board here. So how do we go about shifting this? Uh, well. What I felt like doing is actually some kind of modulo sign and just checking if uh, it's a, if it's on an odd row, and I'll do that right here. So I'll just declare a bool, say odd row is equal to, and then we can use the y that we get from the loop here and say y modulo two is equal equal to zero, and just like that we actually know if it's an odd row or not. Now, um, when it comes down to actually sending this x as a parameter, what we'll do is we'll just do a ternary operator right in here because I feel like I feel like doing that sometimes. Um, odd row. So let's just write that down. If it works, so odd row. If it is in odd row, then we're gonna go ahead and just send um, the normal x. And if it's not in odd row, we'll send x plus one. Simple like that. Now I'll just try to just give them some space so we have a better look here and that should actually work just fine let's actually check it out 
And here we go, so that's beautifully placed. However, we still need the black theme, so um, it's going to be really simple. We're just going to be taking all of this, duplicate, this is generate the black theme, and we're going to reverse a few things. So instead of y being equal to 0, y is going to start on the other side. So y is equal to 7. Since we have an array that is of length 8 and we're 0 base, we start at 7. That's the last row. And then as long as y is bigger than, say, I think it's 4, then we do a y minus minus. The odd row still works. It's the same exact one. Now, um, this should actually work as well, I believe. Let's actually give this a try. And uh, it works just fine. However, we're not spawning the right prefab, and that's totally normal. That's because we just tell them, uh, well, spawn this one, right? So what we'll do here is instead of uh, instantiating the white piece prefab, is we'll check bool is white. And... Um, Let's just say is piece white. And we'll do another ternary operator here. So if y is bigger than 3, then if that's the case, that means we are... Um, if it's bigger than 3, that means we're in the black team. So that's false here. Else it is true. And then we can check. Okay, so if the piece is white, again, another ternary operator. If it's white, then we spawn the white piece prefab. Else the black please prefab just like this and that should actually cover pretty much everything in terms of just spawning those and it seems to work alright guys so we got our board ready in the next few episodes we're gonna be actually taking a look on how to move them just keep doing the mechanic on its side without really doing any multiplayer just now uh, we'll just get this working without multiplayer and then we'll just slowly just implement the server and the client so guys, thanks a lot for watching, I hope you enjoyed this, and um, if you just want to support me or you just like to support what I do on the channel, please check out my website, you can download some stuff there as well. Um, you can also check out the Patreon page, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and do all that kind of stuff that just helps me spend more time on YouTube. So again, uh, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys in the next one.